A big thanks goes out to Squarespace for sponsoring this week's video. Well, hello, hello everybody, and thank you ever so much for tuning in to this week's video. I really appreciate it. I am finally back on uh, Vancouver Island, and I'm really looking forward to doing a bit of spring photography. Now, I, I have been trying to catch up with a lot of work, so I didn't have time to get out this week. So I'm gonna do a bit of uh, processing and I have kind of covered this in the past, but it's something that's very important to me, and that is contrast in your processing and how it can affect not only uh, depth, but also different ways that you can use contrast in your photography. So I hope you can stick around for this video and uh, be sure to let me know what you think of it in the comments down below at the end. All right. Okay, now recently on my Patreon page, I put up a video uh, where I processed this photograph. And if you'd like to see that video, uh, I do have uh, a free trial at Patreon. So if you go and sign up, you can go and watch this video. I'll leave a link down below. Now, if you don't wanna do that, I am gonna go over this process with a different photograph, and that is this one here. Now, before I get into some of the processing, I just wanted to mention that while I was in Antarctica, I did a, uh, a presentation on contrast. And one of the things that's really important in Lightroom and Photoshop and when you're processing is that contrast has a huge effect on depth in your photograph. So let me get, demonstrate what I'm talking about here. And it, and it is in combination with some slight adjustments in color temperature and also uh, using uh, localized contrast rather than overall contrast on a photograph. Now, the thing about contrast in Photoshop and Lightroom is that there are so many different ways to add contrast. So we'll just go over those really, really quickly. Obviously, the first one here is, is where it says contrast. So you can just add contrast to your photograph and that will globally uh, add contrast to, to that photograph. Another way that you can do it that I use quite often is by bringing the blacks down and then bringing the whites up. And I like using this method because it doesn't affect the, uh, the mid-tones as much, I find. Another way that you can add contrast is by just going up to the uh, the histogram up here, and you'll notice that as I drag my mouse across, you'll see these light kind of uh, shaded areas, and you'll see a couple of little arrows there. So what you can do is, say I wanted to bring down the uh, the blacks or the dark areas of this photograph, I can just go into the the toe of this, uh, or the, the, the left side of the, the histogram, and I can just drag that over, and that will bring that uh, side of the, the graph over to the left. And what I'm doing there is I'm actually adding uh, darkness to the, to the photograph. But now I can go over to the right and I can start dragging over the highlighted areas. So you're adding contrast that way as well. But it's not as accurate as some of the other, other things you can do. You'll notice as I do that, it's also affecting the, the sliders in here not so much the blacks. A big thanks goes out to Squarespace for sponsoring this week's video. I've been using Squarespace for a few years now, and what I enjoy about using the platform is its elegant design templates and ease of use. With Squarespace, you can start a completely personalized website with the new guided design system, Squarespace Blueprint. Choose from professionally curated layouts and styling options to build a unique online presence from the ground up. Easily launch your website and get discovered fast with integrated, optimized SEO tools so you show up more often to more people and grow the way you want. Whether you sell physical goods, digital content or services, Squarespace has the tools to start selling online. Make checkout seamless for your customers with simple but powerful payment tools, accept credit cards, PayPal and Apple Pay and in eligible countries offer customers the option to buy now and pay later with Afterpay or Clearpay.
If this sounds appealing, why not head on over to squarespace.com for a free trial. And when you're ready to launch, use the code Adam Gibbs to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. Now, probably one of the uh, more effective ways of adding contrast is actually use the, uh, the histogram here. And for those of you that aren't familiar, I'll just go over this really quickly. Uh, the left side are the shadows or the blacks, and the right side are the whites and the highlights, and anything in between are the midtones. So you can see that as we look at this graph here, we can see that my most of this photograph is in the midtones, with a few exceptions of the highlights here. So we can add contrast or reduce contrast by just by manipulating this line. And there's a couple of ways we can do that. We can either use the sliders here. So we can bring the shadows down and the darks and then bring up the lights and then the highlights and that adds a lot of contrast or what we can do is we can actually physically move the line with our mouse so you can bring up the shoulder here or the highlights and then bring down the blacks or the shadows and that will also add contrast and you'll notice as I do that the slide it affects the sliders as well something to keep in mind as well is that when you adjust this say globally using this line here uh, basically that will add so say we wanted to add contrast here globally that'll actually add saturation in a lot of cases when you uh, add contrast you'll add saturation which in some instances might not be desirable so what you can do is just click on this double this double little line here and when you add contrast using this it won't add saturation it will just add contrast so that's just something to keep in mind uh, also, uh, if we go back to the basic module here, other ways you can add contrast. They don't add contrast quite the same way, and you have to be very careful with these. But uh, clarity, that'll add contrast, and also the dehaze will add contrast. So you can see there's all these different tools to do basically more or less the same job in a slightly different way, and it will have a, a, obviously a slightly different effect on your on your photograph. Now this particular photograph here, what I'm gonna show you is a way to, or just something to keep in mind when you wanna add depth to your photograph. Now you may notice, uh, like the cropping is a bit off here. So let's just adjust the cropping. I want to show a bit of the mountain in the background and bring this down ever so slightly, something like that. And, but you'll notice that the image is very flat. Uh, the light was flat, it was foggy, not terribly interesting lighting. So how do we add contrast but also depth to this photograph? Well, you'll notice that, first of all, it's quite blue. And blue, uh, I've said this a number of times, will often create a specific mood for you, but it'll also create depth in different ways. Try to remember that Anything that has a cool color will often recede. Anything that's warmer, say reds, yellows, will come forward. So we can kind of use that to our advantage. And you'll notice that as soon as I start to warm this up, uh, some, of the, some of the foreground here starts to come forward ever so slightly. If I cool it down, then it kind of falls back. So with that in mind, Let's warm this photograph up ever so slightly. We're talking just, we don't want to, we want to do things, it's better to do them slightly than, than overdo them. And you'll see why in a minute. So we've warmed up, up ever so slightly. And what I'd like to do is add contrast to the foreground, but reduce the contrast in the background. If we add contrast, say I just grab a brush here, um, and I'm just going to quickly grab everything in the background here, just ever so quickly, like so. 
as soon as I add contrast to that, we'll just use the contrast slider, you'll notice that it starts to bring that background forward. If I reduce the contrast, then it starts to fall into the distance. And, and kind of think of it like when you're looking at, say, a mountain scene, when you're standing on top of a mountain, often the foreground will have a lot more contrast. And then as you gradually look out into the distance, the contrast gets less and less. So it's a great effective way to add depth to your photograph. Now, obviously, if I want to bring that background forward, then yes, adding contrast will bring it forward. And also if I start to add warmth to that as well. But in this case, I really want this foreground to stand out. So what I'm going to do is reduce the contrast. I'm going to give it more exposure. And also, I'm going to cool the temperature down ever so slightly. And we can also use the dehaze, except in this case, we're actually adding haze. So we're going to go to the left like that, like so. Now, I haven't been very accurate on the foreground, so you'll have to just ignore that. Now, if I was going to do this photograph properly, then I would make sure that I mask the foreground with a bit more precision, but this is just for demonstration purposes. Okay, so now we've reduced all of that. Now it'd be nice to bring more contrast in the foreground. So what we can do is we'll just duplicate and invert that mask. And let's just, uh, let's just get rid of some of the stuff up here. Let's just get rid of this really quickly. So we're not adding contrast and that in the in the background. We'll try to be a bit more careful with the foreground here. Uh, what you can do, uh, if you're just going to do it quick and dirty like this, you can uh, put the auto mask on and it does a, a pretty good job, especially when you have uh, sharp uh, edges. But like I said, this is just for demonstration purposes. So, um, you know, we'll just leave it more or less the way it is. I think you guys will get the idea of what I'm doing here. Um, so now we're going to add contrast. So how are we going to do that? Well, I think what in this case, all I'm going to do is just uh, bring the blacks down, bring the whites up, and bring the exposure down ever so slightly, and then warm it up ever so slightly, like so. And you'll notice that now we've added depth. Now you'll just have to ignore the iceberg here. Uh, what we can do is uh, we can, let's see here, let's, let's get rid of that mask on the iceberg so we're not overexposing it. There we go. Other things we can do, we can add uh, clarity to that foreground to that that will add a bit of uh, localized contrast not too much though and if we want we can also add just a tad of contrast using the uh, the curves here like so okay so as you can see now we have created this uh, this contrast we've added depth and if we go back to the original file before we use the mask, you can see that by just doing a few adjustments on the foreground, we've really created that depth that we want in our photographs. And like I said, you know, the, the edges here and you know the little penguin and that, they're, they're kind of looking a bit strange there because I've added dehaze. But all you have to do is make sure you use a bit more careful uh, or you're a bit more careful with your, uh, your masking. Well, there we go. Thank you ever so much for joining me throughout this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, be sure to give me the old thumbs up. That's always appreciated. And uh, don't forget, I have a book that's on pre-sale right now. It is just about to go to the printer, so I'm really looking forward to that. Uh, if you'd like to go and check it out, go to my website at adamgibbs.com. All right, guys, thanks ever so much, and uh, until next video, bye-bye.